And we're going to be kicking things off on Bind 2 of all maps. There was so much discourse around where it could go. I think agent composition is also something that surprised perhaps a few, a few folks. There are notable sure. changes on the side of Guild. I mean, yeah, not running a chamber on this map for them. They've been running that pretty much all season long. And it's very interesting that Safe just played one of the most fantastic chambers we've seen so far last time around in the series that he had yesterday against yeah, Optic yeah, yeah. on Icebox. So to see him go away from the comfort that he's been on throughout the season is definitely surprising. They're bringing back in the Viper. They're bringing back a little bit more traditional double controller, double initiator, raise that we've seen so often in the past. This is kind of weird that it's happening right now in this meta. It is interesting timing, uh, to say the least. I know we got you all hot and bothered at home thinking we were about to jump into the map. It's just a bit of a tease, right? <laughs> just a, a little bit Always. of a tease to get you all excited. Uh, but we'll be, we will be getting into the action uh, as soon as possible. Again, if you are just joining us, Group A Decider yep. on the upper side between Guild and Crew. There's so much history um, for these two teams, particularly on the side of Crew when you think about their international Absolutely. success and then, quite frankly, lack thereof yep. the last time we saw them it's almost like a night and day difference yeah it's really interesting a, a team that's been to every single international land uh, not having actually a great record against the NBA and this is what they're going up mm. against in guild uh, a more fresh team I, I would say for sure yeah uh, but still an EMEA team nonetheless they're actually one in five the only EMEA team that beaten was Fnatic in that champions run so that's a long time ago, and this is a crew that we really don't know how to place yet on the international yeah. scale because yeah. of their yep. early exit in Reykjavik. They were the first team to leave last time around. Well, we're about to find out, or at least have a better idea of how we can place them again. Crew kicking off on the attacking half. We saw a little bit of this. Uh, we've actually seen, although that Molly looked like Maybe a bit wide. Either way, you're cutting off some of the pressure that could be coming in from the B side of the map. Yeah, it's an interesting feint. But immediately, Nagzet takes out safe on the other side of the map. He's trying to go for a little bit more info, thinking it might be a B play. But instead, Crew's just rushing up this A site. Yeah, the Prowler has already taken u Hawk hasn't fallen shortly thereafter. A ghost, no armor. You hear the spike has already begun to plant. Utility goes a bit wide. First big box of the round has been checked, courtesy of Mizino. Also dealing with this flank, they just got a little bit of information on Russ, who was trying to go deal with the trademark and actually come through, but they got the information. This is really slow from Guild. He tried dropping a wall to get around it, go a bit wide. That's a little nutty. You see the tap already coming through for Cold Dementa. Now they've already taken care of the alarm bot. Bells and knows there's somebody coming around. The swing comes in on both sides. Klaus falls. It's Russ. Apart. Yeah, he stays alive. Cold Dementa, he's gotten it to half. Nags it with the timing, gorgeous. Perhaps Leo can find more success, but they haven't cleared showers. Goes a bit wide to 1v1 to kick off the series. There's no better way to do it, and Delzik's Frenzy comes out on top to give Crew the first round. Fantastic stuff there from Nags as well, coming out of bathrooms, taking down three players in that initial. He took down Safe to start things off, who was going aggressive through showers. And I think the idea from Crew there was really good. That feint with the Molly that we saw early round. Baited this push out from safe, the quietness and the no information, and then the post plant was really good, even though the trades were going in Guild's favor. They got a lot of kills in that situation. But the clutches continue here from Crew. Anti-clutch in this situation. They were so good in their series against Loud, Masino, uh, Kesnit. Actually, every player was so good in those situations. Oh, a cheeky little something set up. That might hurt. Ah, oh, they're able to get back. Just soon enough, and then a counter nade to keep the pressure back. And you see, speaking of pressure, Gil just kind of fully sending. They've already sent three. Well, they're all falling apart, though. The pressure looked good. <laughs> just didn't amount to a whole lot. Flick, too. Still some damage. They'll pick it up class, but four players up now, and they're on the site. It's really interesting to actually look at the stats in terms of eco round conversions in situations like this. Crew and Guild are some of the worst in this round specifically. Uh, so obviously that's not gonna matter. They're gonna cancel each other out and it's gonna be basically a very important uh, situation to watch in the future series, in the future maps as well. But Crew is able to handle this and now this is where they get good in their bonus round. They are the best team heading into Copenhagen on their bonus round conversion rates at 63%. Yeah, that's absurd. The average is 45% for perspective. You really are the stats guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll see if those stats hold true. 
as Crew tests the waters towards B again. A, a, a trailblazer, excuse me, to lead the way a bit. And nothing going on quite yet. The nice thing is they haven't lost really any space on either side of the map, perhaps a lack of information, but they do have a little bit of room to reset. And Crew, who's always been sticking with this Viper, is going to switch and cycle the wall and the orb, meaning they can peek through here, and Safe is not going to be out to have any say on fighting through that. And they continue to push through into laps as well, so all control gained here from Crew. Spike planted. Rotations are showing up to Old Menta, perhaps the late one to the party. But the fight has ensued. Russ once again having to deal with the pesky. And about the swing out's not going to land as Delsa cleans him up. Again, remember, ball is stats as the rest of this round plays out. Very interesting post plant setup here from Blue. They have three so far back. They've given up some of the space, and now they want to fight back into it. Old Menta's already taking care of Kesnit, which is a big kill to take care of, and Mazina's not going to be able to come out with a guild, get on the board. Well done from them, and it looked like the same situation that we saw yeah. actually on Pistol Round, where mm -hmm. the trades coming through lamps, going on to site as well. I think thankful to that Viper wall that they're actually using. Russ is using one that's going all the way up bathroom like normal, but it's cutting off okay. the front, or the back of site instead of the front of site so they can clear all the way up to where they're planting the spike. And there's nobody here to really help Kesnit all the way back up in lamps. So they're really relying on him to be able to get something. Either way, just the bonus and a huge buy still here available from crew. Yeah, and Nags has play. the Let's sword of forest, play. which you hear come out right on time. Flash got an early bit of info for safe, and he backs right up. Man, look at the pressure that they've taken through showers. They're sending two back that way. And now the Prowler through short. There's a lot of info that they've gathered on what's going on here. The thing is, they could flip the map at this point. Crew are in a position where they could, if they don't like it, they get the heebie-jeebies on what's going on before them. They could duck out through telly. The thing is, they have no info on what's on the other side. And they still have to deal with this pinch that's coming through spawn. And this one is huge. The only person who's going to be able to find an inkling of it before it's too late is Klaus. And he's way too far up. He's going to get caught. Knife out. And the only chance they have here is really to TP out yeah, or exactly. win the site fight. And I don't think either is happening, especially with that flash now. Not expecting to. Cole the Menta in the back. He's got to stay alive here. A nade in his feet. And he ultimately falls a 4v2 left for the round. Bazino and Keznit both still healthy and both still stuck. They haven't chosen to flip the map and with 30 seconds left, time is ticking. Left. You're going to have to figure something out here soon. The thing is the alarm bot. Let's pass right through it here again. 20 seconds left on the round. So patient in how they approach this. And they're just, there's no way they have enough time. Are they just saving this? Could be, yeah. Uh, the, the classic 40-second save. <laughs> they lost so much map control. I mean, you had to you yeah. had to walk back down here. They still didn't deal with actually, who was it, Russ, who was also flanking, or safe probably, who got the initial kill. So, yeah, absolutely. At that point, it's like, what do I do? They know the only option for us is TP, and that guy probably doubled back, so. Well, and you're right. You saw it was uh, Trex who, after getting the kills on the pinch, he yeah. started to rotate back towards A in case that was the play. So they were a step ahead of it. Ultimately, yeah. didn't come out there. But you can see they're doing a very good job of dotting their I's, crossing their T's, and, and what have you. <laughs> I got that right. All I? of the above. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm always afraid I'm going to get that backwards. <laughs> Did you say crossing? Never mind. I'm just not interested. <laughs> <laughs> 2-2 two, two here early on on bind. Gun round for both teams. Klaus with the Spectre. They still have, obviously, all those guns. So this is a very doable round still for crew, even though normally if they lost that fourth, it would spell a disaster for the economy. But this time, they took quick control of Hookah instead. Grenade. Much different pace compared to the regular default that they were running. Feels like a bit of fake though, huh? And they've actually bought a lot of utility out here out from guild they used already the seas they used already the cosmic divide trailblazer now yeah and i'm not even sure what cold amenta stars are going to be but there's still one down on short and maybe he has a little bit more recovering too but if there isn't they should have an execute window that hurts especially with Klaus's viper's pit they find the site 
And that goes down. That's really hard for Guild to retake without any utility. Team members of Guild start to scurry back. But again, you see it's so touch and go. They haven't fully committed to the rotation. Shark's got the ult as well. The showstopper could be huge. No, he goes down. They're just taking the site, but Guild is holding strong. So impressive. Given all of the misdirection that was before them, Save gets three, not able to get the last, but Leo does wow. as Guild take the lead back. What a hold. Utilist hold. That was fantastic stuff from Safe inside of the tube on the B site. And even losing the player in the back of site, Shrex. It's ridiculous that they're able to hold that site. He hasn't fallen on top of him. He already got the early entry, so got the comp from Trax. And that flick is nasty. This guy is playing at an elite level on land so far. Early, too. Early in not like stages. he's warming up either, yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, heck, perhaps he is. Maybe there's more to come. Still able to scrape together a buy here from Karu. I don't know how. I feel like <laughs> it's been in shambles for a little while. Those guns saved. And they'll still be able to buy next round, <laughs> even still. Mizino getting that orb one step closer to having the Seekers online. You can see, given all of the antics that Guild have thrown their way, the flanks upon the flanks, first from A, then from B, and everything in between, they've left Kesnit back to make sure none of that's coming their way. Yeah, he's been definitely a solo mission on multiple of these rounds. Oh, what a shot from Delzig. I even back to yesterday to go back to the Kesnit point. Yeah, on Haven. Mm-hmm against Loud, he was just making it so difficult for them to get anything done on other sides of the maps. And that's why he just got an entry on Nicole Dementa. And look at the rotates off of that. One kill is all it took for Trex and for Leo to scurry to be. And the crazy part too is Guild was doing a great job on this quiet round to get info on the side of the map that crew wasn't. But then Kesnit fills the gap and there's still 30 seconds for them to take this site against safe. But we just saw what he did on the B left. site. Remember here, two sheriffs on the side of crew. It hasn't mattered so far. They start to funnel out. Time you do have some showers control, or at least you had it. As safe, not able to deal with the pressure heading his way. The spike goes down, a four, a five v two. You've got an op on one side. Perhaps you save it here. Well, I mean, they've got money for days. I don't know, do you go for it? Difficult choice, but yeah. the op investment for Trex is already unconventional enough. He wants to save. And Leo, with the money that he has, wants to continue to find some exits, or at least hold on to the space for Trex. Yeah, I mean, throw some bows a little bit. Yeah. Nothing. It's still going to be a little dicey here. They're running up long B already. Look, Kesnit and Klaus. And Klaus is going first with the Sheriff. They're also recovering the Phantom that Kesnit dropped earlier with that the kill on the Cole Menta. That was crazy. You were mentioning at the beginning of the round, they had enough to scrape together somewhat of a buy, right? Like you had what was uh, two Vandals and a Guardian, yep. and then Sheriffs, and they still had money to buy into the next round. They've upgraded the, the gaps that they had in their <laughs> buys for free. We might not My see butter. an eco from them. <laughs> they, yeah, they may have been as close as we're gonna get. Yeah. Somebody out. Too slow. I think Ult's economy is starting to lean their way a little bit too. Kesnan and Klaus, yeah, they both have theirs. Mazino's close. Yeah, they haven't really been a factor yet. Trex hasn't been able to find a spot to use a showstopper. Yeah, Klaus has had his Viper's Pit for a couple of rounds. That last round, Delzik with a massive shot down short as well. It's interesting because Kuru, historically and in the first game as well, as they take Huka and Kesnit doing what he does. That's the type of play you're expecting Kesnit to charge forward and try to find the entry, but Delzik in the last round as well, contributing a little bit. There. It's a good angle from Trex with the op. Against Kesnit, the raise counterpart, but the flash pushes him away. I don't think I heard the flash what? pop either. That may have been a fake flash that pushed him off the angle. Yeah, just to find the angle, yeah. exactly. And off of that crew, once again, deciding they don't like what they see or what they feel towards B. The last time they showed that much into Hookah, though, they were hitting B. Yeah. And Safe had that round. This time, rotating very fast over towards A. Which we've seen out of them a few times now. Safe has got the Seekers, though, to get the information. They know it's coming. There's Kesson Showstopper. Oh, Pencil jump. Gravity Can well denies it. Yeah, he gets nothing. He gets some space, perhaps, but that's it. Can he clear, actually save? Yes, he oh, does. Oh, I didn't think he'd get it. I thought it was just at the last second. Now they're going to drop the Viper's Pit, too. A 
again, similar pulse plants to what we saw in round one, what we saw in round three. They're happy to give up the site and then they're happy to fight back. Mazino's already taking care of Rust. The Seeker's out for Mazino as they try to push their way into that pit. And even now, they don't even care. This pit goes down. Mazino with the flank all the way in, but he goes too far. Gets a little froggy, ultimately pays for it with his life. Klaus still playing in his pit. Spike ticking away. Oh, Kaz he's going to get guns again, man. Yeah. They're so forward thinking. They knew this round was locked up, and Kaz is now in a position to completely ruin Guild's economy. He is so pivotal to the success of this team. If he's able to find something, oh, Leo knows. A nade in his lap. That looks like it's all it's going to be. But man, crew, don't tease me. <laughs> don't tease me now. He really wants the op, too. He could have gone for other players in that situation because he knows the op is hiding, but he really wants that. And you can you feel you you can tell what their game plan is. It's pressure yep. out of crew. Suffocate you every step of the way. Like Kesna thought he was gonna die there for a second. You got the one. But clearing that bathrooms as well was so pivotal to keep that Viper's pit up the entire time. And we're gonna see now crew looking like they're grouping up towards A, forcing Guild to still be in a position. They have guns with the amount of drops that were there, but this is much faster, more aggressive from crew. And Kesna's got the judge all the way into laps already. There's a fatal coming out too. That's going to push them back, but they still have space. Oh, Mazzino not able to find anything there. You mentioned Trex with that showstopper nags that's swinging out, not able to find it either. But of course, it's the classic from Kesnit that gets the kill. 4v2 here in favor of Guild. Operator in the hands of Safe. And again, pressure coming in from all sides. They decide to flip the map. Perhaps they find easier waters at B. It's going to be really difficult for them to know that this flank is coming. Losing the exit early on that take. The trademark not a factor whatsoever in the fade. Hawk still keeping them in the site right now. They should hear it now with that Trailblazer coming through. Not going to find much. Spike continuing to tick away. As Trench just goes forward, because why not? If you have the numbers, overwhelm them, throw too much at them, more than they can handle. Kesnit down to 17 HP as Trex gets three. And that one was just them, Guild, being able to completely disable Kesnit's judge push Yeah, all the way through laps. That didn't find anything. They weren't playing in that position. Three picks before the TP comes out. Trex finally also found some value with that showstopper. Spike down A. And that quite that didn't quite work out. So I think it's gonna be back to that slow, more defaulty way of playing from crew. Try to neutralize any early pushes, then rotate around the map with Kesnit trying to find an entry. And Nags has the op this time, so he might join in on the fun too. Yes, they're spread wide. I think this will be the first round. We have two ops that play too, right? Yeah. Mags has one, Safe has one too. And it looks like there's going to be a bit of a duel. Safe holding the angle. Oh, and Nags takes the high ground. Oh, but he flicks onto Delzik. Timing just a bit off. Delzik takes a step too far. And Safe punishes him for it. That's a big misstep, but they're going to actually respond right back. And there's the op that we were just talking about. Safe falls a 4v4 for the round. And it's just still not side. finding any space in long, though. And this probably is going to push him back. He might actually have to TP away. And all of a sudden, they have nobody coming through long to pinch with Leo. But they have to commit. They fully send as Leo gets three. And now the spike's in no man's land. Nags has no way in. And the TP as well. Guild is being so aggressive when the hits are actually coming. The flanks in this game so far have been masterful. Even when teams have that as their main game plan in their compositions, they're not as good as these ones that are coming through right now. That one, just the TP, cutting off anything that's Rust coming through left. really, really fast after Leo gets that 3K. And the funny part, too, is Safe is not typical even playing city. the typical chamber in that situation and still picks off Delzik. That was a huge misstep, and we'll see it yeah. again, potentially. Because Delzik is peeking before Nags is even on the angle. Ten seconds left. There's no jump peek for him, nothing like that at all. He's just trying to actually fight as well. A yeah. miscommunication for sure. The intention being to 
be yeah, able draw to some attention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's it's kind of speaks to how Crew is actually not necessarily setting up Nags at all the time, right? Even though he's playing a role that could be really, really impactful, their main focus is setting up Kaznet. And that is a good thing in most cases. Well, you told the people we'd see it again, so. <laughs> I guess we'll take Leo's 3K, which was pretty good, too. Yeah, Leo was fantastic in that situation. Yeah. The Prowler to start things off for him to swing off of everything. Really, really good. Guild, on the other side, is really playing for almost everybody on the team. Whether it's Leo, who does have utility of himself to set other players up, or a safe in this case as well, who's playing the sky too. They're throwing it for everybody. And this could be a crew timeout to figure out how do we get back to that streak that we have at the beginning of the game. But right now we're still still seeing not an eco out for them, but the bank is going to start running dry as we end up towards the end of this first half. Uh, Bob, I'm going to be honest with you. You think about Crew and the match that we saw them play yesterday. I think their stars were on. Yeah. I mean, they had yeah. insane performances. And I couldn't help but go into this series and think, are you going to be able to replicate that type of type of performance? Kesnit has to go bonkers. Nags has to do it as well. Mazzino had himself a day. Like They all played super well. And I feel like, I, although it's early, I'm not feeling some of that same sure. spark. You I know, felt it at the swagger. beginning of the game. I think it might be there. I think they're, the guild is starting to get a real read on it, it's hard for them to adapt. I mean, we've seen multiple sure. plays that are just flat out not working. Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. Where they're not able to find an entry. But at the same time, you're right. And I think, I was thinking at the beginning of this, it's going to be hard for them to go from beating Optic and Loud, both these teams, and still be able to be motivated to beat a team that's so much less expected than those two teams. Yeah. The two finalists from Reykjavik. It's... It's crazy that we're here in this situation as well. And the players probably think so just as much, although obviously they think they can beat anyone. We've heard them say that plenty of times. Kesman has found himself a timing to tuck. In hookah, not gonna ch not gonna get any challenge quite yet. And you see Cole Dementa talk about tucking. He actually hasn't found any challenge throughout this entire game in hookah. Outside of the one round that Safe tried to op of top. I mean, that was almost a round ago, essentially. <laughs> that was the only time they found anybody challenging Hookah. Oh, Cold Dementis has been found too. The Trailblazer gave him away. Has to reposition. They're, they're burning the clock here, aren't they? Yeah, they Into are. that midnight oil. <laughs> and Nags is nowhere near either, left. so they're going to have to hit this without him. Thankfully, they have 2 2 split coming through here. Cruz really, uh, Cruz, excuse me, Kaznitz only one. Are going to go ahead and flush out Kesson at the tip of the spear. And Delzik falls a swing out his ears. Kesson is able to find one, the second. Now the operator in play. Ten seconds left. The spike not down yet, but numbers so heavily in favor of crew. It'd have to be insane. And so far, it's been that way. It's a 2v2 now. Spike landed. Russ and safe both weak. But he gets the first shot, a 1v1. Safe. The flash over the top. No one full gathered, but he swings around and he spots him, but not able to land the shots. And exit now holding the angle with the op. He tries to go up top. <gasps> he didn't see his head. Exit doesn't land the shots. His safe gets three and the defuse. A series of misplays, and Naxit almost bails him out. Still, Guild had completely taken control of this game. Six to four. And they're starting to rise up in the clutches, too. I was talking about how successful Crew was in clutch situations. They had a 26% clutch rate against Loud. That is clearly not going to be the case so far this series until they really start to heat up. And Safe has been phenomenal on that B site. It looked though that crew was going to be taking that site for the first time with some great success. Kesson at the back of site getting the first play. two. Yeah. But then they over pushed. They overheated. All the way in the smoke against a frenzy and they lose the fight. <laughs> this is vintage Kesson. This is the Kesson that you were looking for in Hookah a couple of rounds ago, right? Just go, take the space, take the fight and win it. Now mind you, he didn't win the second one. No, and that's massive. If you can e immediately even out the situation, that's not even going down to a 4v5 for Gil. And it's the ace of Kesnit. 
So they leave things to Mazzino, they leave things to Nax. And Guild, who's been so good with the mid-round information. Making the right calls, not necessarily always being able to make the holds because of it. And it will be Nags at Mr. Fourth Quarter. I don't know if we can still use that title. Oh, what a shot. Maybe we can. Yeah, maybe. Might still be the first quarter, but if he's going to deliver, <laughs> all quarters. It's the third quarter of the first half. <laughs> Orbital Strike comes down, and Russ falls too. Are they committing to this? I mean, they have showers control, so I left. guess why not? Yeah, they're going to push their way forward. They have the numbers advantage. Just Cole Menta and Leo remain. And they're just going to walk in. They're hold at that angle. It's just too easy. Now Leo with the unenviable task of trying to win a 1v4, and he's not going to be able to do it. Mazzino gets one step closer to having the Seekers all mine. The screw get to five. Last round in the half. And we're staying really close, despite the heroics from certain players on Guild. Despite the situations. Oh, the elbow. The elbow. That is crazy from Nags. The slow peek, and it really works out. Russ not happy with that orbital strike either. And crew saved themselves a potentially really bad half. And they're putting up respectable numbers here, first half. Again, fast Rick has he's done. He's done waiting. He's done with the defaults, done playing. He's got the showstopper, and there it is. The first satchel out. He's not able to land the shot. And Elder Nightfall the trades him back, keeps him at bay as the orbit as the excuse me, gravity wall does the same right outside a window. And the initial aggression that they had, they wanted to bully their way in. Nothing, gets stopped, gets neutered. A little damage on safe though, he has to be a lot more careful. Still has the opto, so massive value possible from him. One thing that crew has done fantastic in the last couple of rounds, even though most of them have not gone their way, Here. has been the flank control. But still, look at Russ, he wants more. Cole is joining him too. We've seen this so many times, so I mean, surely you're expecting a flank at this point, right? Alarm bot. What a good uh, alarm bot, actually. Yeah, it gives him away. Guy had no chance. And off of that, they have to give the space right back. You see him running back in the showers. They didn't They've been get had. info either. Yeah. They're going to cut this off. That's why you see him back at B. Meanwhile, the hit is A. Cosmic Divide with 30 seconds left in the round. That gives them the plant, though. Oh, what no a play. Way. They pull oh, he gets in. the kill. That is so sick from Cole the Menta. Spike planted. 5v4. Spike did go down. Delzik holding, waiting to see if there's a flank along the way. Already has, uh, or he has a volley too. His tricks just goes ballistic. He tries to go in, he tries to go insane. And he's not able to do it. Klaus falls. Delzik just dropped the molly. Kaznit trying to find some space, but no, Cross holds him back. It's just too much. And with the molly there, yeah, it's gonna delay things just a tad, but it's not gonna be enough. Russ is gonna get the defuse, a 7-5 half. What an absolute play from Cole Dementa and Gil. They really cooked some things up in that round, and that nets them seven. A great half for them, shutting down crew who looked like they wanted to strike back. I still can't put I, the gravity well <laughs> on the other side of the Cosmic Divide. We even this saw it. This is so cool. Look at his POV. Oh, we even saw it and went, oh, they left enough room for the plant. <laughs> Little did we know. That Cosmic Divide leaves questions, and immediately Cole Dementa answers in one of the coolest ways I've seen a planned Cosmic Divide used. Great fucking off. Hey, we lost lost yeah. It was great. It was. It really was. 7 5 half here for Guild. Crew again, Ball, you mentioned they tried making a run at it. They tried keeping things interesting, and while they were able to swing some momentum back their way, it was Guild who ultimately were able to save the day, were able to take the two around lead uh, in. We're going to throw it down to the desk, actually, to hear what they have to think about that Cosmic Divide Gravity Well combo, because it was gross. Thank you very much. Uh, Doug, yeah, what a combo there from Cold Amenta. Big brain, yeah. knows what he's doing. Uh, it's a lead, but it wasn't a pretty lead. Yeah, I think it was scrappy. I think it was tooth and nail, but I think that that's what that half required. Both of these teams are fleshing out what the other is going to have yeah. to offer, and I really don't think you're going to know going in. We did say maybe Fracture, there's some counterplay coming into that, but Bind was going to be a scrappy affair, and we knew it going into this. Yeah, I, I do think there were a lot of rounds, though, for Crew that they overplayed. Like oh, the yeah. amount, I think there was a, a time where we saw Mazzini 
know, run out of a Viper's Pit when you have an advantage. Like we saw some pushes that just didn't necessarily make sense from him. The one thing that was good, though, is the fact that Mazzino is normally someone who comes back in that second half, but someone who had a very good first half, Leo, his utility <laughs> was on point. It, th it's the utility. He might have been the top fragger for his team in that half. That's all well and good. That's very impressive. But the proactiveness of his utility is great. Mm. But then you know what's even better than the proactiveness of his fade, of which he hasn't played this tournament thus far? He's played the server. He's played the breach. And now the man is showing that he can be that triple threat, dare I say quadruple threat, depending on what comes in this tournament. And that's the kind of thing that I think if he keeps up that proactive, reactive utility usage and couples it with his mechanical skill, oh, baby, we have a world-class initiator on our hands. I think that is the talking point here, right? We talk about the great fades that we have in the tournament. Sure. Enzo Shout, they've had practice for months yes. on fade. Up until like the grand, uh, close to the grand finals of EMEA, uh, Tom, Leo had, had not touched fade in yep. a competitive game at all. No, I, I think he's been incredibly good in this map so far, being reactive with it. Like the way he's mm. using his prowlers to yes. sort of deny the space, the way that you've seen the Cs combined with a lot of Cold Amentor's utility, which even excluding just that last round, which was sick, the fact that he was <laughs> basically just slowing and making the explosiveness of crew, well, neutered, as Doug put it, because they basically <laughs> want to be running into these sites with Kesnit at the helm, and instead they go, what? Well, oh, we've just run into like 15 pieces of utility. They've slowed right down, and then they come in at the end, and there's a stack up of players there. Crew's map pick, they got to win it. Yeah, they do. Let's just, let's see if uh, these many rounds will be enough for Guild as well. Doug and Bala take us away into the second half. Thank you so much, Sue. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure to take us into the second half. The first half provided all sorts of nonsense. Uh, but yeah, now we can turn our attention to the second half of Bind. Again, Guild hanging on to a narrow lead. Just two rounds. It is such a good game so far, though. And I love the pace that Karu is pushing up towards the end. Kaznit just running it down, trying to find entries. But I also love the amount of creativity that Guild has. And They've got some things prepped that I don't think anybody's seen yet. Their crew also has a little combination of their own. They use the Trailblazer through the long TP, the bathroom TP. And that nest catches an orb already. Nags as well got a tricky situation in laps with the shorty TP combination. That's the worst. It's so hard to clear. Quiet roundup from Guild because they've already gone through 40 seconds in the round. And they haven't shown very much. They haven't taken very much space either. <laughs> Looks like we're back to the slow pace that Crew had in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Both spotting the crosses of Hookah and Long. And they'll fall back and play Sight Nags. Trying to get aggressive here. That might pull some rotates off. But it's not. Safe tried causing as much of a ruckus as he could while the rest of his team was trying to get into B. It was a flash in his face. It was everything, but they don't bite. They start to flip the map back, though. 30 seconds left. And now off of that, the audio cues, they can, uh, they, crew, can rotate seconds. back to A. There's still a nade, though, here from Kesnit. They haven't and won the Delzik foot race. Delzik still has bathroom. Yeah, they haven't won the foot race. There's still utility on the other side. This is a problem. They're going to have to brute force their way in. There's a nade that you mentioned. No way. No way. The triple, quadruple pump fade? Decay through this orb too, it's gonna stay up. Klaus never left. It's just too easy at this point. Perhaps tried getting a bit too, I mean, bit too nice with what it. What choice did they have? There was a nade coming in their face. They weren't gonna be able to plant that spike for another, what, yeah. five seconds at least? Yeah. That would have left them with, what, 10? And then there's people swinging them, so. No decision to be made there from Guild. And the idea to start off, I think, was really good. They actually baited even Nags to TP over towards B. And he started rotating because of that flash, because of the push from safe. But then, the hit just doesn't actually work out on the A site. And they bought, or they spent way too much time. But boy, did they try every single thing you could possibly fathom. And that's now two pistol wins for crew again. They played three maps yesterday, and they went five and one. So, Which is pretty good. That's very good. Yeah. And it's better than even what they were doing in stage two in the qualifiers. Uh, worth noting here, yeah, while they did win the pistol in the previous half, ultimately the, the half itself didn't go their way. Guild was able to weather the advantage that Crew had and were able to convert it 
do a two round lead and we'll see if it's a bit of the same as it's again another quiet round out from guild so patient remember this is what got him in trouble last time they don't have guns here Perhaps they can try to be a bit more reckless, but you're having to work through all of the defenses that they have. It's a nice kill out from Leo. They've gotten somewhat. Well, they, they had. They almost had. Leo was really the only one who had gotten through. Oh. That always feels bad. One left that always feels bad. Two jumping classic kills, but that's it. <laughs> feels bad. But also, it's really interesting that Leo pushes that smoke. We already actually see a tendency that Guild has. They do a lot more of those shallow smokes that aren't smoking spawn, aren't smoking elbow, and those are very abusable by crew. Interesting bit to note there is you saw Cold Mensa, the only player on the side of Guild with any experience yep. versus crew. Crew that you mentioned has been here every single international event. Yeah, and that was back when Cold Mensa played with G2. At Masters Berlin last year, they took him down in the playoffs. And before that champions run, that was the deepest they made. Eighth place against G2. And so, actually, yeah, it's interesting. Coleman is undefeated against me. <laughs> <laughs> He's also the only player who's been to international land, so. Hey, listen, man, a record's a record, all right? Record's a record. The dub's the dub. Let's see if you can keep it up. Aggressive push out from crew as they take all be long. And they get the gunfight that they were looking for, perhaps a bit more, and they bargained for though, as they just kind of get picked to shreds, man. I mean, that was really, really well done. Well handled from Guild to have the personnel in position and watching that long push that could happen. They always know Guild is going to cook something up on the bonus, right? That's how they have that incredible win rate throughout the qualifiers. And Guild says, absolutely not. Not when we come to an international stage. Not when we're playing on land. Not when we could see eye to eye. 30 seconds left. Yeah, really nothing for Klaus to do there. Cold Mensa gets three on the round. The play call was pretty. And again, it was Crew who took that. They wanted that space. They wanted to take the fight. And again, it ultimately just does not go their way. Guild now with a one round lead. They've weathered. At least for now, they've preserved the lead and they've taken care of having lost the initial two rounds. And while the bonus idea didn't work out, this, I think, is where Crew will start to thrive, at least on the defensive side. Or potentially is their win condition when Nags gets the op online. He's got it right now. He's going to be holding a short angle. Russ on the other side. And the thing is, he can play just... To, oh, he's not... He creeps just a little bit further. He's got a shot at it. The swing's there, and Russ takes the damage, not ultimately falling. And they want to push forward. He's going to satchel his way in with 7 HP. It was off of the decay, and he somehow stays alive now with 41. That's not decay. That's the real thing. The spike still has not made its way out, and Trex is not satisfied with what he's taken, but the bullets go wide, and he's not able to get the kill he's looking for. Safe does as he gets two. Now the Seeker's in play. 3v2 here is Nags. You mentioned the win condition. He's got the operator. He's got to do something with it here. Already down to 36 HP, and he's barely seen anything so far. Plus, they've got the orb that is difficult to work through, and yeah, the decision's being made. Yeah. The guy didn't get a I, chance to play the game. That was a ridiculous round. Nags didn't get a chance to play the game. It felt like Klaus, even though he got the kill, eventually didn't get a chance to play the game. Trex, who Trex double satcheled into the site. He was the only one who played the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was also... Got hit by this. I mean, there's so many things that happened that round. And the rest of Guild was not even close to being able to join him until the flashes end up falling off. So they'll take it. That is huge for Guild. The first gun round after the bonus. And they convert it. That definitely forces crew down. Unless they maybe go for like a double. Or they, I mean, they actually, they had two guns saved, so. Maybe not at all. Maybe we're going to see a repeat of the first half. So far, we are holding to form. We'll see a judge in the hands of Trex. So that mean, that indicates Lamps. They're going to push Lamps here. Yeah, given his antics in the previous round, 
Yeah. He has some of the best double satchels I think I've seen since Bunny at an international tournament. Tournament. He gets so high up. It is insane. Plus the speed straight into laps and nothing found. Not yet. Look at him pushing his way forward. The guy's fearless. They have full U-Haul control. As crew has to give the space up. Hex rightly backs up. Yep, space given. He's gonna rotate around, switch spots with Kesnet. And this track. should be able to follow up with this trailblazer, but they're all grouped right now, still delaying a lot. The nade is what kept him back. They still have to deal with Trex. He's still there. The nade is what kept them back. He was not able to establish that space yet again. As Trex stalwart in his positioning, refusing to give up an inch. But the diffused, oh, it got stopped just at the very end. Nags was able to find one with the operator. Now Leo pushing his way forward. Kesnet on the other side, the satchel in his lap, but the gill comes through anyway. Leo gets another, Leo with three, as Gil gets the round. This kid is unbelievable. The amount of super impactful moments that he's had is so high so far at this event. And that just marks another one, 16 and eight. Finds the kill on the Delsnick and just cleans up both Kesnet and Nags. That's going to be. And he's fired up too. For good reason, man. He should be. For good reason. Guild holding on to a three round lead here. There. Still guns on both sides. You hear the Vipers pit drop instantly to deny any sort of anything towards a short or at least attempt to. Again, that same. Trailblazer used early from Azino all the way through the bathroom TP. Does not spot anything. So what info are they going to be able to gather here? Can Delzik take the fight? No, he jumps out of hookah at the perfect time for Guild to take the space. The smoke's going to come down on the other side of the map. Delzik playing in the safety. Or, well, he's, I thought it was safety. Oh, Dude, they're that's insane. A, they that's, just satchel them into the nade. That's a bad day. That's a real bad day. You hear the showstopper go off. Kesnet not able to find anything. It's a 3v3, so it's on the side. And Axe said he was concealed. He was tucked, and he comes up big at the end for crew. Still, though, they hold on strong. But that execute was just beautiful to watch. Unless you were Delzik. Unless you were Delzik. <laughs> The satchel to push him into the gravity well, into the nade on the other side of that tube. And a prowler on one side. Yeah, beautiful. You know where it was safe. This is where I was talking about crew potentially coming alive. It's in Mazzino, it's in Nags' hands. These guys are defensive sided players. Mazzino, a huge upswing when he switches to that defensive side. We'll see if anybody can join with the aggression that Kesnet showed towards the end of that first half. Mazzino, you said it was wonderful yesterday against Loud. Had that ace, had multiple clutch moments, and just quite hasn't been there so far today. But we've got plenty of Valorant still to play. Kid may be warming up here as Guild call a timeout. Again, they still hang on to the lead, but you kind of wonder here, given Again, I think about Nags and the fact he was able to re or to maintain octagon control, and that was the problem at the end of the round. Perhaps it's shoring up these little things here, and Guild could be okay because it, it feels a lot baller like what we saw out of Crew yesterday. Their win condition was so heavily based around their ability to apply pressure from unexpected areas. Yeah. That's exactly what Nags just did. Yeah, definitely was. The focus from Guild certainly came through to try to clear the back of sight, try to clear the cubbies, not necessarily focused on the elbow push, or really even long at all. So, the gun rounds continue. This is again, Trex goes fast. He actually goes with a satchel. Ooh. He goes ahead of the boom bot instead of behind. Little things, man. These little things are so difficult to expect with the way that Guild is prepped in these situations. Klaus down, the Viper Molly's not gonna be there to delay. The wall not to be able to be used at all either. So Nax has to try to get info himself. Shots go a bit wide. This track still manages to preserve his life. Note he has a showstopper. I like that though from Nax. Not getting over eager, getting the information. That was his yeah. goal. Sure, if he got the kill and he almost did. It would have been okay. Safe heals him up though. So Blinded. info is all that they garnered. Have to watch here. 
If this hit goes to the A site, they've got the trademark, they've got the brim bolt as well, and they've got Kesnet to put his body in front, try to get that trademark down. And the slow field paired with the brim bolt could be disgusting. Cosmic Divide is there. You see the Seekers clearing out all of B. There's no doubt about it. They know that the hit's coming day. The spike's still not 30 done. seconds left. Now Coldamenta on the plant. Delzig with the orbital strike. Oh, right up there. There it is. And it delays. That's great, though. They can't push through this. The, the Cosmic Divide is holding for now, and he doesn't even get punished late in that. Spike now playing at Delzik, still playing backside as he pushes his way forward. There's a player right up top. The flash timing was gorgeous as Trex isn't able to deal with it. Delzik now still having to deal with what's in showers. Nags it left in a 1v3 and with 650 credits and 25 armor to his name. That's not a fight he's interested in taking. Oh. Again, such a good round from Guild. They cleared the front of that Cosmic Divide so well. And then Coldamenta is four steps ahead of Kuru, who wanted to brimbolt that plant immediately. He tapped the spike, moved all the way over to the site that he, the side that he didn't want to plant, yeah. knowing that the, the orbital strike's not gonna come on the first tap. And then goes back to the spot that he wants to eventually. Has to kind of force the speed. Timing doesn't exactly work how he wants to. Okay, next. Keeping this gun is huge. He could drop it and pull up the tour de force next round. Mm -hmm. And again, as you know, we mentioned at the, pre at the end of the round, 650 credits. You, this has become such a big factor at this point. And then he, this was close to being disgusting positioning from Trax on top of that shed. Yeah. Thankfully safe. Or actually, the flash from Mazino is the one that got him down. And we'll move ahead into the 20th round. First time Guild's actually putting a lot of pressure here towards bathroom. I think for good reason. Trying to find out where Nags is going to be with that tour de force. But yep. look at him. He's all the way down long. He's gotten so much information here. They could potentially leave him with the trademark. But no, there's still only two players on this A site. Nightfall to pave the way, but they're a bit timid in their approach. They're not funneling their way all the way out. Trex gets a kill onto Kesnet with the nade. As Russ hits the tap and then pulls back. You have to keep in mind, Nags on the flank, but is it going to be too little too late? Is the play going to be over by the time he arrives? No, it's Delzik who keeps them back for now. A 3v2, Leo so weak. And Delzik has gone unscathed. Max is so, so slow. It's literally all Delzik right now. Finally, is here and it's a double. Nags. Forget Shh. the timing. It doesn't matter if you're late if you're going to do that. Leo now with 5 HP to win out this 1v2. He spots one player. He makes it a 1v1. It's Delzik who's there. He's been a hero for crew the previous two rounds. Delzik on the tap. Leo holds fast, but Delzik lands the shots. Crew refuse to go away. They do not stop. And from around that, it looked like Kesnick was trying to do it all on himself, pushing past lamps, past where Delzik was, completely not finding any value for himself. Leaves it to Delzik and Nags. And I thought Nags was leaving him out to dry, but no. I mean, what an impactful bullet. Look at this double, this collateral. He can't even see the second guy behind the Viper wall. That just hurts. Hey, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Collats are like cool too, but wow. that with the impact wow. on that, the value on that, knowing that you are down in numbers, that changes everything. It's a top 21 player right there. <laughs> I feel like I've said this a lot. Guilds still hang on to a two round lead. He goes for the Trailblazer when he's peeking in front. That's oh, the first no. thing he saw. Orbital strike now to delay. And look at that. They're a bit off segmented. Yeah. Trex makes his way through. Now they can follow. No smoke here. They're recognizing the fact that Guild likes these weirder smokes on this map. And it pays off. Nags finds Russ. Trex has to go hunting. And yeah, he still has the two satchels. He can go right up top. He's only able to get one. Kesnit with the trade. 4v2 here. Spike planted. This Guild don't have very much as far as numbers go, but they did get the spike down. Obscuring vision. Oh, the smoke for Leo to play into. Late for them both to play into. Trying to deny that tap or anything like this, but there's a timer on this. Cold Manta not able to get anything. Leo, one, and that's all it's going to be. Delzik's going to get the defuse. It's now one round lead for Guild. 
crew not willing to let an undefeated map for them slide in the first map of the series. Their map pick. And Gil's going to go for a timeout here as well. Nags, that's what I'm talking about. He's not smoked up in that position. Oh. And I love that Kesnitz tucked on that angle right there. That's not normally something you do. You're, you're trying no. to get a pick, right? Yeah, absolutely. They know the showstopper's coming. They hear the satchel. He tucks immediately. Nags is trying to stay wide. His TP's not active yet. And they get the trade for it. You mentioned Guild calling a timeout. His crew have just kind of been the shadow of Guild for what feels like the entire map. Right, Guild, they get a couple of steps away, but it just, crew doesn't go away. They're lurking around, they're hanging around behind him. Now the gap down to one round as you feel the pressure begin to build. Again, folks, a decider for Group A right here. The stakes haven't been any higher than they are right now in this tournament. Absolutely. And they really want a Matt one victory. Guild so close to flipping this. But can they hold on? That's going to be the question right now. And their money's not holding on. It's not going to be pretty for them. It is absolutely not going to be pretty for them. Because crew have a chance to really put themselves up, even potentially to overtime point right away. Yeah. Nags has still got the op as well. They recovered that last round too. 17 and 12, he's improved too on this defensive side now. Flash trades and crew has not given any thought at all to this setup that Guild is doing where they're throwing the molly all the way from short yeah. to try to trap players in Octagon. And that's because Nags is switching up his position and they're just not getting lucky in the rounds that they're choosing to do that. Here comes the wall, the late curtain as well. Not something you normally see on Bind. Usually that's immediately put down. Mm -hmm. but they wanted to leave it potentially, oh, they might go B in this case. Instead, they'll just prowl her up and another smoke kill from Kesnit. And note, that was, I mean, they were just trying to funnel their way in. They had the cover. They had gotten a couple of players into U-Haul. Nags just cleared so far at bathrooms as well that he has free reign to peek through bathrooms late. And his TP's all the way back up towards heaven. Meanwhile, Cold Demento was flirting around in hookah, seeing if he could find anything. Now rotating back towards A with the rest of his team. And that gives them the numbers advantage. I do like this freeze though, but crew just sent to flash down oct or down long, so they know they're not rotating off back into long. I think what they're doing right now is waiting for safe to have a flash back up. No, they're just gonna swing out of laps and crew's there with a the crossfire. Kesnet and Delsic are just destroying them and destroying that push. Yeah, the gun, the gun difference here. Very evident. That's Cole Dementa. Ooh, he spotted him. <laughs> have I told you that that sheriff skin gives you automatic cut shots? You have. Yeah? Yeah. You believe me. Yeah, I use that sheriff skin. I've never missed a shot. Friends at home, if it's in your shop, go buy it. <laughs> After the game, though. Live now? Okay. After, Whoa. After the game. When did you become a shill? <laughs> Yo, come on. 11-11, <laughs> all tied up. And yeah, we expected that situation. But the thing is, crew has another buy in the tank. So even if Guild wins, Crew has two chances here to get to overtime point. If Crew wins, Guild is reset. Their money is not going to be there. Yeah. So this is it for Guild. Do or die on this map. Again, I have to mention how Crew have been so persistent on refusing to give this map up. They've hung around the entire time and now find themselves on the precipice of winning this thing back. You see the Viper's Pit drop. Viper's pit. But they've taken the space that they want. They have Showers Control, too. I mean, if you've given it already, why not? Sure, the Showers Control is crucial for this, too, because they ha they're they not going to be able to scale with it. You see the Seekers come out to try to find some info on what's happening in the Viper's Pit, but the Nightfall is going to deny. Kesson's yes, got double satchel and hold here. He can go crazy go. into that pit. Freaking A, of course he goes. Why is that even a question? Drops it, and he gets the kill under us, and now the pit's down. Kesson trying to find more, and he does. As Guild are in so much trouble, man, with three members left. Yeah, they have Showers Control. The Gravity Well is going to pull them off the Diffuse like we've seen before, but Kesnit with the third. As Guild down to very little. Perhaps Trex and Leo can do it. 
Trex trying to push his way forward and way too many members on the other side. Yeah, they get the kills at the end, but crew get to map point. Oh, and he gets the gun down too, Leo. No escape. And that's what I was talking about. What a round from Kesnit. This guy a monster. I've seen that situation literally unfold so many times with this guy. We're so familiar with him at this point. And the trailblazer was perfect. It stunned Russ in that situation. So you're wondering, how did he just guess where he was? It was not a guess. That's cohesion there at its finest. Kesnit knows how good that round was and also knows now their best chance to end this. Final round, potentially, of the map here. Again, crew have been on the doorstep of this, and they finally taken the lead. With eyes on the prize, they were able to cauterize and capitalize on what was put before them, and now they're in a position to put Guild away. I can't believe they got the spike down so fast, though, in this round. A 5v5 retake, and the tools are not there this time. Thankfully, no Viper's Pit. He tracks up in that spot again. They spotted him already. Feels similar to what we saw, though. No showstopper this time, but Kesem is still able to find value. 5v4 here, crew with the advantage. Safe trying to find something a little cheeky. And he does. On the defuse already though. Is there a molly out? Yes, the pull as well. It's gonna delay for a little bit longer. Again, crew still have the numbers advantage. Perhaps Leo can find something, and oh my gosh, he does. He finds the back of Zeno's head. Leo gets another. It's all down to Kaznit. And I don't think there's any way in. Not this time. Leo with three. 12-12, baby. We go overtime. Let's go. Guild and crew oh, delivering on this first map. In spades. Kaznit as well in the last couple of rounds. But Guild just pushed onto the site. Low money, low utility, and they still make it work. Their executes have been phenomenal. And that's no different right there. We're going the distance. And we've set ourselves up for such a phenomenal qualification match in the playoffs. Huh. Now that is very interesting. Yeah. That's only the first two or the first two games that either of these teams played. Crew against Loud and Guild against Optic. Mark two. See things here, Crew starting off the first overtime round on attack. And again, very reminiscent of the opening rounds or the opening halves really for both sides. Quiet. Waiting to see if there's any aggression on the other side. Nags rocking the glass cannon here. And he's going to get an angle at something if Cold Mental goes a bit too far. The shot doesn't Hello? land. The swing is there. Nags with 9 HP has to back up. He thinks he's playing regulation there. He thinks he has head under shots. That's why he swings back into it. The muscle memory. Yeah. Almost gets Nags completely dead. And <laughs> Messino's yeah, running back. Yo, let me heal you. <laughs> I got you. But don't make the mistake again. And yeah. the thing is, though, he's given up that space. And look at the rotate from Guild. Four players are going to be here. And now the they Trailblazer know. spots everything. They know there's an op on the other oh, side. Oh, because he's dead. Yeah, there's no way out of that. You see the Season 8 combo. Finding value. The star for crew. I love this. Mazzino just walking out. They've given up the space right now. Oh, but they smoke. And he doesn't take elbow. So off of that, Guild are still going to be able to approach this retake from two different left. angles. Molly from Brim, Molly from Viper to deny, to delay anything coming in from spawn, but it's gonna be a pinch in from the other side too. Note now three angles with which crew are gonna have to deal with this. Trax swings his way out, Klaus already able to take care of him. How much more can he find? How much faster can he hold as he finds his second? It's just Safe and Leo that remain. Spike ticks away, Mazzino tries to swing it out, not able to land the shots, a 2v2 here. Nags again has that operator. What can he do with it? It's gonna have to be safe who does it himself. A 1v2, time not on his side. No way, he's able to get it to a 1v1. But again, not enough options. He's gotta deal with the swing, but I just don't know that there's enough time. He got the kills, but the defuse is not gonna come through. Crew take the first overtime round. And in a fashion that is super reminiscent of their game against Loud. They lose the opening duel. Kesnick falls to the C's nade combo. That's the deja vu, isn't it? And they just walk it back into the site. Look at this. Beautiful stuff from Guild. And the read was perfect for them, too. Remember, they had four people on this site as this hit's about to come through. But Klaus holds strong inside a hookah. And the rest is history. Safe almost makes it work, but not 
quite there, and that's a sigh. Well, losing hope a little bit. I mean, Nags played it so well, waited until the very last possible second to challenge that. We swap sides again. Guild really strong in these executes. They're setting up really fast. They've got Octagon control. Look at this pocket that Mazzino's in. That boy's in trouble. Oh, okay, forget it. He's not in trouble. He is the trouble. Mazzino with three. Guild thought they had him trapped. But he punches right back. Such a good play from Klaus and Mazzino. They haven't used that pocket at all. And Guild have not noticed that it exists. Tucks himself in it, they drop the Viper wall, and he frags out. For this to be how they potentially lose the round, Save has to throw it and reverse the satchel, and his feet still gets a kill onto Kesnit. They've got time to work with. A two versus five to hold on to the game. Ah, they just don't have the personnel. Two and it's three. now, yeah, it's a 3v2 now. Oh. Safe, again, a 1v2, 24 HP. Spike just out of reach. They're separated right now. He gets the information in Octagon. Oh, but Mazzino's being a little bit disciplined. Gonna group back up. 30, 30 seconds, seconds left. left. Safe. With so much before him if they swing out at the same time. Actually, if he's able to isolate some of this, he's gonna get a shot at it. Nothing seen. Delzik on the swing, he hears that. The Molly in his lap, safe. Gets it, and now the Seekers come and play, but with 13 seconds left, he still has to get the spike through and get it planted. Ten seconds left. Is there enough time? Mazzino holding the angle. Safe has to go, he has to go now. He's just waiting for the fight to come through, and it's not going to happen. What a way for the map to finish. And of course, Mazzino with the fourth at the end, the hero for crew when they needed him most. Just an unbelievable round from him.